Hey boys and girls. Okay, we're gonna get into some science right now. Um, I was so excited to assign you guys your writing about your favorite planet. So you can finish that today if you haven't finished it and please share it with me because I'd love to know your favorite planet and the interesting facts that you learned about it. Um, also, if you do that art project or making the planet out of any type of object that you want, just being creative, I'd love to see that as well. I hope you enjoy and have fun with it. I think um, it's a great little activity to keep you guys busy during the day because you can do it outside, inside, you know, anywhere using whatever objects. You can even go on a nature walk and find objects in nature to build your planet with. That would be pretty cool. So, um, we're going to wrap up our entire planet unit because next week we're going to start talking about life cycles of animals and we're going to start out with our frog to, um, first. So what I want to do is I want to wrap up and go over all of our planets again and um, then I'm going to just talk a little bit about the dwarf planets and give you some information on them and I have a couple of little worksheets. Um, for you just to kind of test your skin, like test your knowledge on the um, the planets that you learned. And I'm going to give you three different option pages. They're all basically the same. They just ask different questions. So you can do one of them. You can do two. You can do all three. You can save them for later. They kind of go with your little fact cards that I sent you to help you out. Those are like your little cheat sheets if you need them. Um, but see how many you can answer maybe without using them. That would be pretty cool. Anyway. Um, your mnemonic devices that you might have came up with, if you came up with a funny one that Miss Bowden, um, you didn't use Miss Bowden's, I'd love to hear that. Remember, my very excited mom just served us noodles. Mercury. Second planet is Venus. Third planet, Earth. Mars. Jupiter. Saturn. Uranus. Neptune, very good. My Mercury, very Venus. Excited, Earth. Mom or Mother, Mars. Just Jupiter, served Saturn. Um, us, Uranus, and Noodles, Neptune. Okay, so we've got those eight planets. Here's your cool little fact finder pages if you want to do them. There's one, two, and three. They all just give you different questions if you want to test your knowledge or test mom and dad's knowledge of what they've been learning about these planets as well and see who's right. Again, your little fact cards will help you answer these or check yourself in the answers. Or you can always send pictures to Miss Bowden and I can check it for you because I know all the answers as well since I've been teaching it. But it's just a cool little knowledge checker to see how much you enjoy learning about those planets. Um... But we're going to just wrap it up today to talk about those dwarf planets. Because remember, one of those dwarf planets used to be a real planet until recently. So Ms. Bowden is going to kind of go over the reasoning why. Um, and it's pretty cool. I understand it now. You know, no more hard feelings about Pluto not being a planet. So really cool, interesting fact. Um, a long time ago, Pluto was our ninth planet in our solar system. And Pluto was past Neptune, it was further out, and it was, it's really tiny. Um, it is tinier than Mercury, and um, it's part of something called the Kuiper Belt, which is similar to the asteroid belt, except the asteroid belt is made of a bunch of different rocks. Um, and asteroids, whereas the Kuiper Belt is made of a bunch of different ice particles and frozen things because it's so far out. It's on the close to the outer edges of our solar system. So anyway, Pluto um, has got some similarities with Neptune and the fact that it was discovered using mathematics. And then once they discovered it, because they figured something else was past Neptune, so they continued using mathematics to calculate items. And they ended up getting um, Pluto, and then they looked through the telescope, and they were able to, to find out about it. Well, Pluto takes about, I think from what I remember, because I'm not sure if I have the information quite here, it takes about six Earth days to go around one time 
to make a day on Pluto. So it moves really tiny. It's also really rocky because it's full of ice. So that's a difference between those gas giants. Remember, all those outer planets are made of gas, but Pluto is made of rock. And so um, Pluto is icy cold. It's not as cold as Neptune, but it does have a little slight atmosphere. It takes about six Earth days to make one day. But to go around the entire sun for a year, it takes 248 Earth years to go around. So like that's even longer than Neptune. It's so long to go around there. Um, so Pluto was discovered in the 1800s by mathematicians. And um, Pluto's orbit though is different. Most of our planets are quite, make a, a, a quite even circle around the sun. Well, Pluto will circle far out from the sun and then it cuts in. And for about 20 years of its rotation around the sun, it cuts into Neptune's orbit. So it's actually closer to the sun than Neptune for 20 years of its orbit. And then it goes back out. So um, Pluto is kind of all over the place. Um, if you were to weigh 100 pounds on Earth, you would only weigh seven pounds on Pluto. That's how little gravity there is. Um, but it's still pretty interesting that it used to be a planet. But then back in 2006, they decided, no, Pluto does not fit the needs to be, a, the means to be a planet. So what Ms. Bowden found out about these dwarf planets is that currently right now, we've got five named dwarf planets, but there's so many more out there. Ceres, Pluto, Eris, Humea, and Maki Maki. So we've got those five dwarf planets that Ms. Bowden just recently learned about. Um, Ceres was actually found a long time ago, and that one lies in the asteroid belt. So astronomers originally thought that Ceres was our fifth planet, not Jupiter. But then they saw another object, and then another object, and another object, and they said, these can't be planets. And so that's when they realized that this was just the asteroid belts made up of different objects. So they called all of these minor planets. So then Jupiter was our fifth, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Well, when Pluto was discovered, they also started looking out and they ended up discovering Eris, which is even further than Pluto and colder and tiny as well. Um, and that one takes over 500 years to go around the sun one time. So that one is super dangerous. Though that one spins quite fast on its axis for a day, but that one's super far for a year. It's over 500 years. That one's just crazy slow because it's super far from the sun. Um, but that one is also part of the Kuiper Belt. And then we have two other ones, Humea and Maki Maki. So basically in 2005, these, um, the IAU, the International Astronomical Union, I think it's called, they said, well, we keep finding all of these smaller planets. Um, let's make some stipulations on what it means to be a planet. So some guidelines to call something a planet. And the first one was that it had to go around the sun. All of these objects go around the sun. The second guideline to be a planet was that it had to have enough gravity pulling in its center to make it like a sphere and to hold it into a shape. All of them suit that criteria as well. Except, um, I think it's um, Humea is the only one that's a little bit oblong and that one spins super fast but um, it still meets that criteria. Now, here's where they make it not a planet. The third reason. The third reason to be a planet says that it has to have enough space and clearing around it, enough push of gravity away that nothing else is in its orbit going around besides like a moon. So, these five dwarf planets, they met the first two guidelines, which consider them dwarf planets, but they didn't meet the third one to be a real planet. 
So like Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, when they rotate around the sun, it's just that planet on that path going around the sun. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, same thing. It's just that planet going around the sun. But like Ceres is part of the asteroid belt. So it's not the only thing in its path. The asteroids are the same and are in its path as well. So it doesn't have enough gravity to push those asteroids away. So that's why it's not a planet. Same thing for Pluto, Eris, Humea, and Makimaki. Maki. They are part of the Kuiper Belt, which is all those icicle structures. And because they rotate so far out, they're not the only object that's part of the, um, the rotation around the sun. So they're not considered planets because they don't have that gravity to push away those objects to be the only one. So I thought that was really pretty interesting. There are tons more out there left to be discovered. Another cool fact about Pluto is that it does have five moons, but one of the moons is almost as big as Pluto. And um, actually Pluto and the moon, they kind of consider them almost like binary planets because they are pulling at each other. And you know how moons usually rotate around the planet? Well, this moon and Pluto rotate around an imaginary like force, an imaginary gravity spot. So they rotate together. So um, Pluto is pretty interesting and, and, and quirky in that fact. But um, only one probe has been out to visit Pluto and it was back in, I think 2015, it might have arrived there um, to kind of learn a little bit more. But there's so much out there to learn about. Space is so interesting and we're constantly learning and seeing new things about it. So if, um, I hope you continue your learning about space. I know on Netflix, they had a little series about the universe called the universe. And it was, um, maybe eight to 10 episodes, about 45 minutes each. And some broke down the planet. Some broke down cool, like galaxies. Um, you know, maybe watching parts at a time might be a little over our little students heads, but I think they would really like to see the pictures. And, but you would understand parents and you, if you're interested in space, then I think it'd be pretty cool for you guys to, um, to watch that. I know I watched most of the episodes and, um, I love learning about it. I, there's something that I learn new every year that, um, I didn't quite pay attention to, I guess maybe the year before and it sticks with me. And so this is definitely like stuck with me all our entire space unit because I've thoroughly just enjoyed reteaching it this year and I learned so much more about the planets that I never thought that um, I even knew or remembered which was pretty cool and it's always great to relearn these items so um, I hope you guys truly enjoyed our space unit I can't wait to see your projects if you did them or your writing and um, yeah if you find any cool space movies to watch or if you learned something else that's really cool and interesting let Miss Bowden know and um, I'll be back with our ELA to finish off the day see you later